Hi, BookTube. I don't know how I feel right now. I don't know what just happened. <clears throat> In case you didn't know, um, for the last uh, few days, um, even though this is Pentathon, I understand that, but I needed to finish it. I have been reading A Voyage to Octurus by David Lindsay, which um, is a sci-fi book, I guess, from 1920, and uh, I don't know what just happened. Um, this may be one of the strangest books I've ever read. Um, for those of you who have read it, I would love to hear your thoughts on this book. Because um, it is very philosophical, but I don't know if I know what the fuck it's being philosophical about. And I didn't know how to talk about this book, because I don't want to spoil it for anybody. But I really think I could tell you every single thing that happens in this book, and you still you still wouldn't have any fucking idea what the hell I'm talking about when you read it. So, I'm gonna... I'm gonna try to give you a... quick... It, it can't be quick. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you about it and explain why to you it's so weird and why I feel like I've almost been like, like brain raped, if that's a thing. Um, like it wasn't like against my will, but things didn't go the way they should have. So I just feel dirty, I guess. It's kind of like, um, when I was explaining it to Zoe, it was like, because I was talking to her about it as I was reading it, and I'm like, it's like, I don't know, like I was hitchhiking or something, and this really nice man drove up and said he would give me a ride, and I got excited because his car looked kind of comfortable, and he seemed very well-spoken and a nice chap. And as we were driving, the further we got, the more I felt like, oh, this is weird. I don't know if I, what the, I don't know, hmm, I don't know if this was the best idea. But, I mean, we're going in the direction I want to go. He's taking me, I think, to my final destination. But, is this okay? I don't know if it is. I feel weird. Should I jump out of the car? Well, we're moving right now, and if I jump out of the car, I'm going to hurt myself. I get some, like, scrapes and bruises, maybe break something. I guess I should just stay in, but I don't know if I trust my driver anymore. That is how this book made me feel, okay? So, we have a seance, okay? And there's all these people whose names we learn and all this stuff. Um, which doesn't matter because we never see any of these people again. Um, but late at the seance, these two dudes show up. Um, should I even tell you their names? Um, Maskell and Nightspore. Okay. So when they get there, there's this loud noise that's like... Um, supernatural and um, uh, apparition shows up with a smile on his face he's there and everyone's freaking out but then this guy named Crag runs in 
and breaks the neck of the apparition. I picture Crag as a leprechaun. And I know I shouldn't, but I just, I can't get Leprechaun out of my head for some reason. So he's like, hey, do you guys want to go to Octurus? This whole time, Night Spore has been like, huh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah, I guess, you know, whatever. Like, totally, like, indifferent. And just, like, whatever. And Maskell's all, like, I don't think you could take a stock to us. And, and he's like, no, I can't. Here, look. And this spyglass thing that weighs, like, a gajillion pounds that I have in my pocket. And you can see what Octurus looks like. Well, so they go to this, like, dilapidated observatory. They had to, like, climb this stuff. But, like, it was really hard to do it because their blood's really thick. Because it has... Octurian gravity or some shit. So they cut their arms and Crag spits in their arm cuts so they could like breathe better or something. And they all get naked. And then Crag like tackles Maskill and starts tickling him. And they start rolling around on the ground naked giggling. Then they get into a a crystal torpedo and open up a vial of Octurian back rays that um, shoots them back towards Ar Arcturus and um, it, they should be there in like 19 hours or something but Masco wants to take a nap and when he wakes up he's in the desert and he's naked and some chick that might not look like a chick walks up to him. He has a protuberance on his forehead, a, like new appendages coming out from behind his ears or nodules or something, and a giant tentacle coming out of his chest. Telepathy. And um, the tentacle is to show love or learn love or something he's almost dying he can't get up but it's because his blood's too thick so she cuts her arm and this like white milky shit comes out cuts his arm and they like mix blood and now because they've mixed blood he's feeling better and she's feeling worse but they both feel equally as shitty the second sun rises i can't remember what it's called but they'll be like burned to death this altar to pray to shaping which is another word for crystal man i guess is another name for surter and Surtur is like the god of this place. And then at this time, he also fe he also finds out that Crag is the devil of this place. So he doesn't want to tell her, uh, Joywind, that he knows who Crag is. Within a couple minutes of talking to her, he immediately um, falls into her religion and is like a total believer. And I think where I started reading this book wrong is right here because I was reading this book like it was going to be a like a story, like a tale, like a adventure, you know. Because honestly, the voyage to Octurus is over in like the third chapter. The rest of the book is something completely different. Then he decides after because he's kind of like in love with Joywind, but not in a romantic way like in a platonic way i guess and he meets her husband and everything's cool and he's like look like i'm at this new place i gotta see all of it like i can't just sit here and this is his fucking problem like as much as later on in the book they make it seem like the life that joy Wind was leading was not good um, I don't think he should have ever left. This is the deal with this book. He keeps meeting people. And when he meets, like, a different group of people, he'll meet, like, one to three people. And then he will move to the next place. 
and meet another one to three people. And I say one to three because he'll normally meet one and then that person introduces him to another person and then that person introduces him to another person, whatever. Okay, so basically he meets this chick. The chick wants him or something like that. She turns his one protuberance on his forehead into two and turns the tentacle coming out of his chest into a third arm that's sole purpose is to lust for things. And um, she wants him to kill her husband. And so they go to do this. And the things on the forehead make people do what you want them to do. So they go to kill the husband. And I... Yeah. So he kills the husband. But then one of the other wives wants... Maskell too so she convinces the other chick to commit suicide somehow or another in doing this his bond is broken and she can't control his mind anymore and he's like come on I'm gonna take you this other place where they kill women or some fucking weird shit like that so then um, Joy Wynn's brother sees him and her and I don't think he ever met Joy Wynn's brother I think they they talked about each other he's like I'm gonna tell Joy Wynn what you're doing and this is where I'm getting really confused like they end up killing him and his soul goes into Maskell's body and so he's pissed off at her for killing him because he loves Joy Wynn. While he's asleep, he astral projects, and it turns out he's the apparition from the seance that Crag kills at the beginning of the book. And when he kills him, he wakes up, and now he's just him. Find some, like, weird priest dude in the middle of the desert who takes away his protuberances and gives him a third eye. And they're going to go into the town that kills women, but he's going to go in there because he has a new religion. Like everything else, Maskell asks a bunch of questions, but then immediately falls for it. And so him and this chick are no longer enemies. They're now followers of this dude named Spade Devil. I think there's a lot in the names here. So basically this shit goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. There's this faceless chick he falls in love with, um, and then she dies, runs into Crag again, and Crag starts making fun of him for falling in love with a girl that he's known for like a couple hours or some shit. Then this is where it starts getting weird, okay? Then they meet this dude who's like a third sex, so he's not male or female. He doesn't like Crag. Um, they argue a whole bunch. Crag ends up killing him. Crag, I guess, kills kills Maskell. And when he kills Maskell, we find out that Maskell isn't really Maskell and Maskell's Night Spore. But Maskell's dead on the ground. So however that fucking works. Then they decide that they're going to go see Crystal Man... And they go and see the crystal... Well, Crag doesn't. Maskell goes to see the crystal man and then doesn't do anything after he, like, sees what's happening and then gets back in the boat with Crag and finds out that Crag is... I think finds out that Crag and the guy who is the crystal man are the same person even though Crag hates him. And on Earth, Crag is known as Pain. And then they just like go off into the into the sea. So what the fuck just happened? Like why did what I So um I, I enjoyed it, I think. But I have this weird, empty feeling. My head feels funny. Um, 
I feel like I just watched a David Lynch movie backwards. Okay? So, um, now I'm gonna just go back to reading Robert E. Howard. Because, um, I need a palate cleanser. So, let me know down below what you think of this 1920 sci-fi book that everybody from, like, Tolkien to Asimov to Arthur C. Clarke to um, Clive Barker, they all love this book or some shit, okay? So, um, fucking hell. Okay, let me know down below. Good luck, booktube.